Learn Java the Hard Way, Exercise 1. All right, so we're going to be working on firstprog.java. That's the first program that you're writing in the book. Uh, this could be pretty difficult for you if you've never written code before, so try to pay attention to every detail. Um, for the purposes of this exercise, make sure you match every space, every capital letter, every lowercase letter, just exactly the same way as I've done it, and uh, everything should turn out okay. So I would like to point out that these numbers that are at the beginning are not something I've typed in. Those are That's one of the preferences in my text editor to display line numbers. So I, I had you turn that on in um, exercise zero, so hopefully you did that. But if you did not, don't type those in. Those are automatically in there. Okay, so for now I'm going to assume that you've typed in everything correctly and just show you how to compile it on the command prompt in the terminal. Um, and then we'll go back in case you have some sort of mistake. So you can sort of check line by line. So here I am in my terminal. I'm going to say cd to change directory into the Java code folder that I created in the previous exercise. So my prompt changes to show me that I'm in there. And I'm going to do a directory listing, ls, to show that firstprog.java is in this folder. If you're not in the same folder as your code, then this, this isn't going to work. I'm going to use the Java compiler to translate from the Java instructions into ones and zeros. And because there was no error, there's no output. And then I'm going to run, well, first let me show you that there's now this first class. that's a bytecode file that contains the ones and zeros that's actually going to be executed by the computer. So now I'm going to type Java first prog. Notice there's no .java at the end there, just first prog, capital F, capital P. And then that runs the code. So hopefully that worked for you. If not, let's go back and make sure we've got all the details right. So line one is the word public, then a space, then the word class, then the identifier first prog. That's a capital F and a capital P. Everything else on that line is lowercase, and there's only two spaces there, one here and one there. And that has to match the name of the Java file as well. Line two is just a open curly brace right there. Um, or uh, a left curly brace. Line three starts with a tab, and then the word public, the word static, the word void, the word main, a left paren or an open parenthesis, a space, the word string with a capital S, an open and close square bracket or a left and right square bracket with no space in between, then a space, then the identifier args, A-R-G-S, then a space, and then a right paren or a closed paren. Line four starts with a tab as well, and then it just has an open curly brace on it. Line five starts with two tabs, then the the word system with a capital S, S-Y-S-T-E-M, then a period or a dot, the word out, then another dot, then the word print line, that is P-R-I-N-T-L-N, -N. that's a built-in method in Java, then a left paren, followed by a space, followed by a quotation mark, or what they call a double quote, um, this is an open quote because it's the first one on the line, even though there's no difference between the open quote and the close quote. It's the same character. If you're using the text editor that I asked you to, it'll be just a single straight up and down quote like that. Then there's the sentence, I am determined to learn how to code, which ends in a period because we're writing in English. Then there's a close quotation mark or a close quote, then a space, then a close paren or a right paren, and then a semicolon. So that, that line is pretty complicated. Line 6 is real similar. It starts out with two tabs, then system with a capital S, a dot, then out, then a dot, then print line, then a left paren, a space, an open quote, the phrase today's date is, and a space, a close quote, one last space, a close paren, and a semicolon. And this guy right here is called an apostrophe, or sometimes by programmers that's called a single quote. Um, we won't be using those too much in this book, except in sentences. So you don't have to worry too much about those. Line 7 starts with a tab, and then a closed curly brace, or a right curly brace. 
and then line eight starts has just a closed curly brace, and that's it. So if you typed everything identically, then your program should compile and work with no errors. So now we're going to do the study drill, where we're going to say it wants us to type in today's date. So I'm going to type in the date I'm recording this, which is Monday, June 23rd, 2014, and then a period, and because I like to end sentences with a period. Now if we go back to the command prompt, and we just run the program again, we'll see what we had before, because we didn't recompile it. So if we recompile it, we are asking the tech, the Java compiler to translate from our Java code to the byte code. And so again, we have no errors. And then we run it. And where's the date? What happened? Well, see, I tricked you there. What I forgot to do is save the file. So because I didn't save the file, the version with changes is only in the memory of my text editor here. It has not been saved to the hard drive. So what I'm compiling is the older version of the code, so that may trick you in the future. Um, also notice that I could have told that it hadn't been changed because this little asterisk right here next to the, the file name, that means there are unsaved changes in my text editor, and most text editors will do something like that. So I can save it, and now there's no unsaved changes. Now I go here, I compile it, first probe.java, still no errors, first probe. And it looks like that. So hopefully you were able to follow along with that. If not, back up and uh, you know try it again. And uh, hopefully you can get this one done. Because if you can do that assignment, then you can do just about anything in this book.